Today's show is sponsored in part by Roan. Men's closets were due for a radical reinvention, and Roan stepped up to the challenge. Roan's commuter collection is the most comfortable, breathable, and flexible set of products known to man, and here's why. There's a product for every occasion. Pants, dress shirts, quarter, zips, and polos. You never have to worry what you're going to wear when you have the Roan commuter collection. Mobility is everything. Looking good is easy, and it has odor-free tech. For people like Johnny Lieberman, Gold Fusion, anti-odor technology, you'll be smelling fresh and clean all day long. And on top of that, Roan is 100% machine washable, so you can ditch the dry cleaner altogether. I can attest to all of this. I wear this stuff constantly. I love it. I'm comfortable. It's easy. I throw it in the washer. I put it in the dryer. And then I'm uh, on a stage somewhere, waving and saying hello and smiling and dying inside. But not because of my Roan. Try the commuter collection. It can get you through any workday straight into whatever comes next. Head to roan.com slash spike911. Use promo code spike911 to save 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off your entire order when you head to rhone.com slash spike911 and use code spike911. It's time to find your corner office comfort. Let's start the show. Spikes Car Radio starts now. How about a nice guitar bass for Led Zeppelin? Going old school, because it's an old school show with just me and Zuckerman right now. But how nice is this? Hey, lady. Hey, lady. Got the love I need. Don't you just love Zeppelin, Zuckerman? Baby. Never gets old, even though it's old. Oh, darling, darling, darling. Like sometimes when I play these songs at these moments, I don't even want to do the show. I just want to listen to this whole album now. Genius stuff. Smart that they're not on stage like some other octogenarians trying to. I am so impressed by Mick Jagger right now. I mean, he's 80 plus dithering around the stage, dancing like a pixie. It's It's, impressive. It's unbelievable. It's impressive as a matter of gerontology. Okay, <laughs> if you were a gerontologist, a medical doctor, this would be amazing. You wouldn't be able to take your eyes off of it. As a rock and roll fan, I don't want to see it. I put on some Rolling Stones right now so we that, can talk about Mick Jagger. That's all right. This that's is Monkey right. Man. Yes, 50 listen, years ago. Listen to that guitar. God damn it. That's right. Oh, this is killing me. Here we go. Oh my God. Wow. He can do whatever he wants. But I mean, did you, I, I did happen to see him dancing across the stage recently on Instagram. That was just like, God, for, what is it, 82? What is yeah, it? Yeah, he's amazing. At 102, it's, he'll be tap dancing. He flies from the back to the front. It just shows you there's no rules for the human body if you take care of yourself. And it shows you there's I'm no rules. And then for those who didn't have any rules, say like Keith Richards. He's doing all right, too. Yeah, they, give him a, they have a doctor with the shots and the infusions, the Look, IV bags. <clears throat> I'm still trying to understand what I saw at the Hollywood Bowl when the Rolling Stones were there and I was backstage. And I was in the uh, the staff dinner. Rolling Stones, somehow, somebody, I think my friend Stevie Salas brought me. And there we are having dinner with the not just the Stones, but the whole crew and everybody. And, uh, and I've told this story before to you, and forgive me if I've told you, the listener, as well. But I don't remember. I'm halfway cool. through the meal, and it's just, you know, buffet tins and everybody eating. It's a typical crew meal, really nice. Everybody's really cool. Uh, Keith Richards swaggers in with some sort of crew member holding him up, acting completely blind drunk, falling down, laughing, his, and not acting rationally. 
Yeah. And then they kind of pull him out of there. Right? And then, like, ten minutes later, the show starts, and he comes out and plays uh, Start Me Up. And, and, does a, and, and does a, a, performs a flawless show. <laughs> and I think this was, I think this was a joke. I think this was all a big joke for our benefit because there were people other than the crew there. Because there's no way the guy I saw before that show could play the way he played. I think it was a big, big joke, but I've never heard anybody talk about it. So I actually so, never heard this story. So I'm, so, so I'm not, I'm not sure if, you know, you want to think, you know, you Hollywood lore or rock and roll lore would tell you somebody brought him into his dressing room and put a big syringe into his heart and injected him with something that straightened him out. But the A.B. of these two different Keith Richards, Keith Richards, I, I don't know how he did it. I think it was a joke. I think it was all a prank. And I think it was pretty funny and very believable. You haven't heard that story? I didn't tell you that. You've story. never told me that story. It's the first time I heard about Hollywood Bowl, Stevie Salas, Crew Meal, Keith Richards fucked up. There's a there was a possibility that they unplugged his guitar, right? And someone was in the back playing for him? No. No, no, no. No, he was playing. I hear He's that always they do great. The- I mean, I, I that was a time where I, I think I was following them around a little bit. Stevie and I would go to Vegas and go whatever shows and, you know, they This played. was 80s, 90s, or 90s in the 90s. Hi, that's you know, thirty years ago. Sometimes they, you'd end up in uh, in Mick Jagger's uh, room for the after party, which was kind of fun. Did you at. wake up with your underwear on backwards? I again, I have nothing, but uh, I'm very impressed with that guy. No, he's he was disco dancing with three girls at once after a show, and I just thought this guy is living a life. He's living yeah, a great life. He's a great no, man. You know, he's th- a great man. He's a great man. Genetics, genetics. Yes. Genetics. I wonder if he's a car guy. Do you think he's a car guy? He had cars back in the day, but I don't think he's interested in I think in Keith cars. Richards did. I think he had a couple. Anyway, welcome to Spike's Car Radio. There was the other guy, the drummer. He had cars, didn't drive Charlie them. Charlie Watts? Yeah. He didn't, you know, he had a huge collection and didn't know how to drive. Did you know that? I didn't. There you go. I love the Rolling Stones. I mean, I love them. I love them. I'm not going to see them. I might not go see. I don't go see anybody anymore. But you know why he's still I saw, out there? I've seen them probably more than anybody ever. And you know, it, you, I mean, I could do a whole show about the Rolling Stones. You know the story. Like I was desperate to see the Rolling Stones, and my parents didn't have. They don't have money, and they're not going to send a, a kid, a 14 year old, to a Rolling Stones concert in Boston. They just, and, you know, just, there's no way to do it. There's no way to pull it off. You don't know this story? WBCN has a, has a, has a, uh, a contest. If you're the 150th caller, Old you get- Old man Ferris did this. This is another story I haven't heard. Listen Please. to this. We're all at home. I'm babysitting. If you're the 150th caller right now, you'll get tickets to the Rolling Stones. And Wally and I are like, oh my God, how do we do this? That's not even, we'll never win this. My sister quietly, Beth, walks upstairs comes down 30 minutes later and goes, I won the tickets. <laughs> I'm not lying. I go, what? It was at the Worcester Centrum, I think. She goes, I won the tickets. And we went, ah, we lost our minds. We lost our freaking minds. Did My you- sister, Beth. Thank you, Beth. What year was this? That, I don't know. Whenever I'm 14. So do the math on that one. 74, so 78. I had an opportunity to see them in Los Angeles in the very early 80s. I thought they were too old. I said, I'm not going, they're too old. But listen, I'm 14, right? I understand. It presents a, it, now it presents a second problem. How the hell do we get to Worcester? How do you spell Worcester? Like Worcestershire sauce. Worcester. Yeah. Worcester, the crack capital of Massachusetts. And uh, look, I mean, and then my dad comes through. Fats of all people. He doesn't say, hey, I'll drive you guys there. But he somehow knows somebody in radio who had a contest where they were busing people from Boston to Worcester for the show. And he said, I'll drive you to Boston and, and then pick you up. And so Wally and I got on this bus and we went to see the Rolling did Stones. You, did you smoke some grass? I have no memory of the show or the bus ride. No. no, Zero memory of any of it other than my sister winning, which is probably her greatest moment in our family. 
Her greatest, <laughs> greatest moment was winning us. Was 45 years ago? Huh? Her greatest moment was 45 years ago. Yeah, for me, that was the greatest <laughs> moment. I hope she's listening. <laughs> She'll hear about it. Her lowest moment, in my opinion, was when she was uh, nine, she fell off a horse and she said, I'm done with horses. And I said, but isn't the whole idea that you get back up on the horse? <laughs> I couldn't. I thought the rule was you fall off the horse, you get back up. I couldn't. I still can't wrap my head around that. I said, isn't this an opportunity? But now I know she was right. She was right. I hate horses. The glassy-eyed dinosaurs. I hate all of them. Time for an ad. It's time to talk about Bredestein Tires. Bredestein, the official tire partner of Spike's Car Radio. We've had a long relationship with Vredestein. We love Vredestein. We have Vredestein on many of our cars. Jerry has them on his Volkswagen, the Sprint Classic. Erica has them on her Model Y and her new Model Y. Johnny has them on his Rivian. Zuckerman's got them for the BMWs. And my favorite Vredesteins of all are the ones we put on my Series 2A, the Grip Classic. It completely reformed the ride of that old tractory Land Rover that I love so much. Vredestein Tires has a long relationship also with Giorgetto Giaggiaro. Sorry, I butchered the name. A legendary automotive designer who designed the sidewalls of those tires that are on Erica's uh, Model Y. Fantastic. Uh, what else did he design? Well, how about the BMW M1, the Di Tomasa Mosso Mangusta, the DeLorean, the Lotus Esprit, the Maserati Giblet, the Alfa Romeo Alfetta GT, uh, Seiko watches that you may know, the Sigourney Weaver uh, alien watch, and more. You need Vredestein tires like we need Vredestein tires. Go to Vredestein.com, V-R-E-D-E-S-T-E-I-N.com to find your local Vred dealer now. And thank you to Vredestein tires for uh, continuing to be a sponsor of Spike's Car Radio. All right, back to the show. It's been a great weekend, Memorial Day. It's now Monday. Uh, Johnny Lieberman is at Villa Deste. Here, let's see uh, some audience. Oh, wait, no. There's some audience applause for that. Covering the Villa Deste show. I'm sure dressed like a clown, trying to fit in like I did. So it's just me and Zuckerman. We've got a lot to talk about. What did you do? You know, here, a couple of things. Big weekend for like lots of stuff. Indy 500, which we did, we never got to, was... Uh, did you watch any of it? No. It was pretty great. <laughs> it got rained out most of the day, so the whole thing was delayed, but it actually worked out because... Did they do all 500 miles? Yeah, yeah. And New Garden won in fantastic fashion, and Scott Dixon placed third. Our buddy Scott Our Dixon. Our guy. New Garden is this... Uh, he won two years in a row. That's Two years in a row. That's, that's right, That's a Zuckerman. pretty amazing feat. Very good. And they say we know nothing about racing, but look at that. So come in knows, says he didn't watch, but he knows. Pato O'Ward came in second with his Chevy Aero McLaren. I'm playing a guy in Pato, named Pato in tennis today. I play him a lot. He's a cereal slicer. Nice guy. Second Pato. Did you know there are this many Patos out there? In uh, Spanish, that's like a Pato is a duck, and it's also uh, like, like the foot bones <laughs> in the menudo. <laughs> we also had uh, the Grand Prix of Monaco. Which I woke up, you know, I, I play tennis very early in the morning, and I woke up, and there's an F1 race to have my coffee with. Fantastic. And Ferrari uh, took first and third. McLaren Turks took uh, second. I don't know these guys. Leclerc, Piastri, and Sainz. Unbelievable. And uh, we had a lot of fun, Zuckerman. Jack uh, took his mom flying. They flew over Dodger Stadium and his high school. That's pretty fun, right? Get up in a plane, fly around. No. Family of four could have solved 50% <laughs> of your problems right there. My son James was playing uh, tennis tournaments and uh, doing wheelies. Did I tell you about his funny crash? Yep. You sure did. Well, that's, you know, I'm setting up a story right now. Did I tell you? You're supposed to say no. Because <laughs> they have heard Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're we're recording it. this. Okay. I'm glad the listener knows that, that how, how clueless I am about the rules of Hollywood. I'm like, I don't want to hear this shit again. But go ahead. I haven't heard it. Go ahead. Please. When you say, have you heard the story, no, you can't do that to the people listening because they want to hear the story. They want to. It's they frustrating don't. for them. But they, okay, go ahead. I haven't heard this. Please tell me. But it's enjoyable. I have to. To turn your mic down a little. You're blowing my ears out. Shut here. up. 
James, uh, I got this emergency. Uh, neighbors came running in, and suddenly my phone started ringing. James is laying in the street. He's hurt. I go, where? Down the street. We race down the street. He's laying in the street. He was doing a wheelie, and he looped his sur on. And uh, this family of three was backing out of their driveway, saw him on the side of the road, and called 911. As I'm racing down, uh, ambulances and fire trucks are coming. And I say to James, what did you do? And this, this very nice family who uh, called 911 was like, ter- you know, terrified. It's like, you know, he, he was laying in the street. He's not. I go, okay, I got that. I got that. <laughs> Is he, James, he, he goes, I just looped it and I just fell. And I go, did you get knocked out? He goes, no, you're wearing your helmet. Yes. I go, uh, sounds like you got the wind knocked out of you. He goes, yeah, yeah. And, and, and ambulances, fire trucks, no lie. Two fire trucks, ambulances are one block away. I say, get in the Subaru. <laughs> he stands up and he gets in the Subaru. The family is obviously very concerned and says, uh, you know, you should probably wait here for the ambulance. I go, he's good. He's good. Fire truck, ambulance, lean in the window. What happened, buddy? Uh, he goes, I, I just uh, I fell on my bike. And they go, we wearing your helmet? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, that's all we care about. All right, get out of here. <laughs> no brain bleed. Here's the ending of the story. This family, this great family who was taking care of my kid, and thank you very much, was backing out of the driveway with their son to buy them, buy that kid a Suron, and saw my son laying in the street <laughs> with his crashed Suron. And they turned to this poor kid and said, It's over. Your electric bike adventures are over. There you go. <laughs> And many souls were saved. Now, you, you, <laughs> no, wait, I just want to end by saying, so James gets back. He's just embarrassed. I go, so, you know, you know, when you fall, when you get the wind knocked out of you, you yeah. go, hoo, hoo. that's yeah. what was happening. That's what they were seeing. So they, was that they the first good. time for him? No, he loops, he crashes his siren all the time. But now you have a very nice neighborhood. Yeah. You were telling me you had an encounter with a neighbor lady just yesterday. I did. Yeah. It sounds like. But my I, nose is running. Go ahead. You talk for a second. I got to get it. I got to get it. Yeah. You know, we all have neighbors. We, we have neighbors that are arm flappers. You know about the arm flapping neighbors? But this is something that keeps happening. Yeah. In your neighborhood. The, the I people. Would say, I would guess. It happens every neighborhood. I would guess this happens to our audience a lot. And I'll tell you what. Okay. Here, here's the situation. I'm, uh, I was in your 993 cab. Oh. Coming up the street. And uh, there was an older gentleman walking his dog. And as I come up by him, I could see his wife uh, half a block away looking at me. And I knew exactly what she was thinking. It You're going to kill him. It doesn't matter what speed I'm driving at. She's already angry at me because I'm in a sports car. So I take the, a very proactive uh, driving position, which is... I pass this guy at two miles an hour, literally two. I'm looking two, where I'm almost as fast as the dog, just a little faster than the dog, right? And he looks at me, and he doesn't give me the oh thanks. You know, you get this oh thanks when you slow down for pedestrians. <clears throat> Not that I'm speeding in my neighborhood. I slow down below the speed limit to let people know you don't have to worry about it, especially if they're older folks, right? I get up to the wife. And she leans in front of the car. She gets in front of the car. She goes, you need to slow down. It happened the day before with young Jack Ferriston driving, too. He was driving me somewhere. And there's, a, there's another lady in my neighborhood who's really out there. She doesn't matter how slow you drive. And this was funny because I said to Jack, I go, it does, where she is, her position in the street, it doesn't matter how slow you are. This woman's going to yell at you. So just let her do it and don't get upset about it. He was, he was going like two miles an hour. She leaned up and she goes, you need to slow down. Another one. But it was a joke speed. It was like a walking speed. And we both started laughing. And that, yeah, that, that woman's out of her mind. This other woman, and this is why I bet listeners deal with this. It was all based on the car. And a 993 cab is, is kind of harmless. A, a harmless car, but it was in first gear. Right. So you, you're downshifting into first gear and maybe it's a little louder. And she's, you know, not if you could just say, hey, your car's too loud. But I'm not I'm not doing half the speed limit, let alone, <laughs> you know what I mean? Getting that admonishment. 
And it upset me. I'd lost it. I, I was hungry. Remember when we were in Pebble Beach that one year, we were stopped and the cop said, you need to slow down. <laughs> I, told, <clears throat> I told him the same thing. Well, you know, it reminds me of that. Uh, here, hold on. We can just uh, segue right into that story. That golfer. What's his name? Yes. Scheffler. Scotty. Scotty Scheffler. Where is this? Big misunderstanding. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> A lot of new footage. Uh, Scotty Scheffler, I guess, uh, on the morning of this uh, PGA tournament. Where, where where the hell was it? Was this in Kentucky? Louisville, Kentucky. Kentuck. Apparently, there had been a fatality or someone had been hurt. So the police, there was a big police presence there. And, you know, the golfer, golfers all have to show up early. And the police were telling this guy to go around. And he was trying to communicate to them that I am a PGA golf pro. And I should be able to go here. And he didn't listen to the police. Now, you and I have been in that situation. Remember the fireman at right. Luke Occult? Yeah. It sounds like, at first, I, you know, I don't know Scotty. I don't know anything about golf. I don't even know who Scotty Scheffler is. the first time I've ever heard his name. But I looked at his face and I thought, this guy looks kind of like a dick. And I bet he's at fault. I, I watched the footage and it, it, it doesn't actually look that way. It looks like he pulled up to the gate and said, I'm going in. And it looks like a police officer pulled him out of the car and arrested him for that. Um, they, of course, they said he assaulted and interfered. But with the footage, it. now there's uh, two angles on the footage, and if you watch it, there's no assault that anybody can see. And this guy also turned off his uh, camera, his uniform camera. Did you know that? Let mm -hmm. me tell you a few more things about Officer uh, Gillis <laughs> is his name. Uh, Gillis was suspended for five days for conduct unbecoming for driving an intoxicated civilian in his police car, proceeding to do donuts in a business parking lot, according to a 2013 memo. This is the officer who mm, arrested him. Mr. He was also disciplined for pursuing a vehicle that did not commit uh, a, fel a violent felony or warrant or wanted on a warrant. So I guess he got into a police chase with someone who really didn't warrant it. Um, not a big deal. Gillis was found at fault for accidents in May 20 of uh, 2021 and also August 2019. Uh, he was also found to be at fault uh, for another accident in 2013. Uh, the officer was hit with one-day suspensions in 2010 and 2011 for failing to show up at court. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of issues with this guy. And I don't know that there are that many issues with this Scheffler guy. It, it, it seems like this is one of those, you know. Impulse control problem, but not on Scotty's part. I think so. Yeah. Not that I'm any fan of golf or golfers, but it seems like this guy just, uh, you know, What's you, you know what it is. It's like his, he was a little arrogant, I'm sure. And he went, I'm, I'm just going to go in. You don't know who I am, blah, blah, blah. But bad move. What do you think, Zuckerman? Eh. You know, sometimes power in the hands of the wrong people is power in the hands of the wrong people. I mean, we've dealt with this over and over and over again. Pebble Beach Concours, you know, it seems like the police are given this job to keep an eye on uh, traffic and parking and everything else. And then the events don't seem to be able to communicate to them what, who they need to let through or not, right? You know, you and I have been turned yeah. around so many times. We're always like, look, we can't get to our own event. We don't know what to do. You just have to tell us what to say or who to talk to because it doesn't happen that way. And by the way, I think tickets are going on sale for the Pebble Beach Concord very, very uh, shortly. So we will be there. Make sure you're there. We'll Great. be there. I think we will. All right, we got some car news to talk about, but let's talk about Race Deck. Over two decades ago, Race Deck was invented a cost effective, durable, and truly do it yourself modular floor system engineered for the garage. Race Deck's multi patented design allows for an easy DIY installation without all the hassles and mess of toxic epoxy coatings, transforming your garage in just hours, not days. Choose from over 20 styles to create the coolest garage on your block. The company was founded by Jorgen Mahler, founder and Porsche Nut. And he put this stuff in my hanger, and I absolutely love it. I found myself just looking at pictures of my floor while I was writing this morning's argument. That's very strange. 
<laughs> I gotta, it's not something I'd admit to. You know, it's something when you when you love something so much, you don't mind looking at like when your car, you look at a picture of your car. I'm doing that with my race deck floor. I love this stuff. Race deck is the original modular flooring system engineered for the garage. 33 patents proudly made in the USA. Modular garage flooring did not exist prior to race deck. They pioneered the industry. Race deck was born out of our passion for the garage life. You know I love Race Deck, and that uh, Race Deck, and now you can have it too. Shop at racedeck.com. Use code Spike911 for an exclusive 15% off and free shipping. That's racedeck.com. Code Spike911. Exclusive 15% off and ships free. Thank you, Race Deck. I'm getting some soon. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. They're doing. Uh, we're in the middle of doing your uh, Baldwin Hill, Hill sauce. So I had that. Uh, Let's see, lots of car talk here. I had that McLaren 750S. What'd you think? I was prepared to not like it. Really? I was prepared to, uh, you know, because you look at those things and they haven't really evolved design-wise. And, you know, I made a snap judgment I was completely wrong about. And then I thought, well, I'll like it and the world around me will hate it. And I was wrong again there, too. This was a really popular car, Zuckerman. It was primarily because of that color, Tokyo Scion. Which is which is what in real language? It's it's kind of like gulf blue with a little green in it. Right? Really appealing color. And it glows. It really glows. And, you know, I was a little self-conscious about, uh, I'm not lying, you know, just where I was going that week. I was a little self-conscious about driving it. Everybody loved this thing. Everybody loved it. I loved the way it drove. I mean, it, it is wildly fast, Zuckerman. Wildly fast. I was driving it in the touring modes and not even getting up in the track mode or sport modes just because I was like, this could really hurt me if I lose control of this. It's a $324,000 car. Zero to 60 is 2.5. Zero to 100, 5.1. Wow. Beat wow. my Bronco. Blowing my Bronco. Top speed, 2.06. So 740 horsepower, twin turbo V8s. Those, those twin what, is that a sub 10 quarter mile? Do you have that, that stat? It must be. I don't have it in front of me here, but it has CarPlay. It doesn't have Android Auto, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> Everything worked. And, I, and it was also a spider. You know, push of a button, the top comes off, which I don't really care about in these cars. But this car really was fast and fun and it was it was one of those cars zuckerman that like it's so bloody fast it comes on so quick that you really have to respect it you really do you, do you see that guy uh that that mclaren guy crash on the yeah. set at the carson coffee yep yeah i i totally get it totally get why he did that what happened there cold tires he gets on it that thing just scoots but when you know that and you know how to drive this thing and you let your tires heat up it is a rocket ship. It is a really easy to drive, usable car. Well, I, that's, I think that's the reputation they have, which is that they really work. They're dependable. They're good. They're great cars. And for some reason, guys like you and I don't really <laughs> find the looks to, to speak to us. There's a, there is a, something about a lack of emotion, for me at least, that makes me go, mm, I, I'm not really feeling it. If I were blowing out a bigger collection, let's say I was, you know, I had, uh, who's that goofball that won the, the billion dollars? Oh, uh, Castro. Yeah. Say I had Castro money. He's probably almost out of money by now, by the way. I hear he's actually very, he's got good people around him. He's very responsible and really? was, uh, he's got, I just saw pictures of like hookers at his house. Well, okay. So uh, <laughs> what is responsible about that? It's the world's oldest profession, Ferris. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not on. putting down our sex workers. I have nothing but respect for them, but it doesn't look like he's exactly living a normal life. Okay, if he had a cargo container of cocaine in the backyard, I'd say it's irresponsible. I I'm think not he gonna... might. He was. <laughs> I spotted him out the window of my office at O'Gara. Yeah, buying more cars. He's a, he's on a run, man. He can't run out of money, Ferriston. This guy can't run out of money. I'm applauding him. I don't know. I I sense trouble. I, I don't think he's got good people. If he does have good people around him, they're not taking care of him. He had a couple of hookers. <laughs> okay. What do you, you got a billion dollars. You're not going to get a hooker? No. 
I'm not. 99. Let me tell you what I'm going to get. That's where this whole thing started. I would get one. This is honestly what I would do. This is a new way of thinking for me. I would get I would get this car or another McLaren. I'd get one McLaren. I would have one Lamborghini. I would have one eh, one new Ferrari, maybe old Ferraris. We'd fill that out. But I'd have one of each of these marks because they're so good. Okay, you realize that getting one Lamborghini, one Ferrari, and one McLaren equals also a hooker. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, these are no, all doesn't. things all go together. No, the, the cars are so you don't go to hookers. Pursuing cars are so you don't do anything. Those out. are hooker cars. No, they're not. They are. You're a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, hooker they're cars. They're not. That's you. That's your judgment. I fi find them to be wonderfully engineered, technologically advanced, uh, beautiful machines. Do you remember what, that year we went to the Ferrari party? <laughs> yes. It was filled with hookers. You're right. <laughs> and strippers. And that's not a joke. <laughs> that's not a joke. That was really the old average, guys. The average age gap between ma a Ferrari man and his date mm. was 50 years? That's right. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> but that's Ferrari. <laughs> you don't have to do that, but you know. it does help you get cars in some way. They take that into consideration. That's their image. But anyway, getting back to McLaren, I started... Have you been on a McLaren configurator? Have you gone no. there and built a car? I hadn't for a while either. They've got a ton of colors. They have the most colors of any of these exotic car marquees that, like, in choices. Like Porsche has four, and then you can buy five. These guys have buttons where you can just press all these different colors. But I was actually that's, kind of impressed. That's funny you say that because my mind is stuck with... What was that first launch edition, MC412? Yeah. They had one color for that. Well, I, John had a gray one. Yeah, they, they had a very limited palette. And then palette. I think the McLaren orange was, right? There was always an orange one. Now but, there's six oranges. Right. Yeah. So they've really expanded. I just wonder if the, the, the value holds up if you keep oh, okay. things. I have a feeling, and the listeners will, will probably message us, you could probably get an MC4-12 for 30 grand right now. I would get that. Would you? I, a here's what I really car. Yeah, but they they're so comfortable and they feel like little race cars. They do they you know, you really feel like you're in a nice little race car when you're in these things. I I loved it. I mean, I had a great time in it. And I really would. I would own a McLaren in a second. That's a 10-year-old car. We let, let's plan Z one of those. That would be hilarious. <clears throat> we could wrap it in a funny car. I'm not going to I'm not going to say I vouch for what service might be like on a car that's out of warranty like that, but But have you driven one? Have you driven no. a McLaren lately? You would love it. They're really good. It's like feels like you're in a race car, but you're comfortable. I remember being in traffic heading downtown and just going, this is so nice. It's just a nice, fast little thing. It feels good. I'm a fan. I'm, I'm a big fan. I've also been, um, I heard a lot from our uh, our guys about the Bronco. Really fun. You know, I, I talked about what do I do with this Bronco in the top. Uh, uh, Steve from Leno's uh, Garage called me and said, best top. Is you, they're the people, best top, you got to get best top. He goes, let me know, I can help you up, I can hook you up with them. Uh, another uh, outfit said, we're going to, we, we got to put a new exhaust on it. That's going to give you uh, 25 more horsepower. Really? I'm having so much fun with this truck, Zuckerman. And then uh, a lot of folks sent me the Bronco Ford Performance Calibration Tool, the ProCal 4, which... Uh, is a little computerized device, not unlike your phone, Zuckerman. You plug it into the car, and you can adjust all the settings. Uh, you download new specs, like a performance spec from Ford. And, so you and, flash the car on you, your own. Yeah, you flash it on your own, and you get uh, you get you know a boost. I'm going to show you extra horsepower. I'm going to show you the spiritual uh, link to your car. Uh, it was yeah, on yeah. PCH oh, today. Wow. I'm going to send you a picture of this. It's a got to be a late 60s Bronco. Yeah, this. mine's the 66 Heritage reissue idea of that. And that's what I saw. It's blue with a yeah, white Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. You see it outside, right? Yeah. Zuckerman, I can't tell you how much I love this truck. I can't tell you how much. I could have driven your 993 today. It's sitting in the garage. I love Everybody this Everybody that's got one of these says the same thing. Holy and I remember moly. clearly, I remember clearly how Johnny Lieberman said... <laughs> You would hate it. You would hate it. And I said, I have a feeling you're going to like it for exactly what it is. It's so fun. You know, but but I, and here's, here's what it really is for me when I'm in it. 
I love the cockpit, but I'm looking down that hood. It's such a cool look. You should, at the end of the show, go sit in it, and you'll see what I'm talking about. All this sea of blue, this squareness with these two little, like, gun sighty things over the front fenders. There is something about that. If anybody's, there are certain cars that have great hoods. And I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, late 70s, early 80s, Eldorado has a great hood. Uh, Benz from the Mm. 280 SEL. Uh, those cars or a 300 SEL, great hood, great hood ornament. The gun sight is always fun. It's great. Yeah, a good hood really will help you keep a car forever. Dino's. Remember that? 46 GTS Dino, that look is yeah. unreal. Unreal. You'll die if you sit in a Dino. Don't do it unless you want to part with $800,000. Right. You'll have to get that car. Remember when we drove that low hood 280 uh, SC convertible around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That had an amazing hood. That's really, that's the whole experience. Yeah. Where you're seated, the belt, what you're looking at, what you're looking down the hood, and if you put put your foot on the pedal and everything works right, Uh, holy moly. Hood look can change your your, your, whole feeling about your day. Now I want to drive. Wait, who the hell's in my driveway? Hold on. Everybody's away. Hood look. Oh, just a an inconspicuous white van. Hmm. Nothing to worry about there. Um. Now I'm getting excited about driving. I have a house at 3RS. Are you driving it? I'm going to drive it this afternoon. Oh, good. This, I just put 100 miles on the 53, mm-hmm. and I wanted to do that before I get in the 3RS. I want that okay. 70 years... A yeah. difference to kick me in the face. So you haven't driven it since the pickup? No, no, no. I drove it once. I drove it out to um, Malibu. Oh, you did? I did. Oh, wow. And it was fantastic. Oh, yeah. I got a bunch of pictures. And then um, People- I drove it to the office, uh, and it was incredibly slick and fast. I got a lot uh, of bug-eyed looks. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to take the car back to Baldwin Hills and I'm going to get in the 3RS and do a little circuit a little, in it. Some donuts. You know, there's that, there's that circuit I can do. I can go out to La Brea, La Brea to Stocker, to La Cienega, to uh, Obama. Mm-hmm. And that is almost like a race lap. Yep. And there won't be much traffic today. No. It's all on PCH going north. Well, you better get it done soon because there's a new law that's been passed that requires California cars to yell at you for going over the speed limit. And this just happened in the Aston. Remember, Johnny was saying it's just Europe. Well, apparently it's going to be Europe and California, according to Motor.Motor1.com. The new legislation that passed will require cars sold or manufactured in California to be fitted with uh, intelligent speed assistant, which means it's going to beep the second you go over the speed limit. Beep, beep. Hopefully it won't keep beeping. Um, this haven't, hasn't passed yet, Sackerman. These uh, passive systems do not actually limit the driver from speeding over the limit. Instead, they simply alert the driver by flashing a symbol. Oh, this is so annoying. This new law goes above uh, that and will require an audible tone to sound when the speed exceeds 10 mile over the posted speed limit. The California Assembly must pass a vote before this becomes official. If so, the law would go into effect in 2027. It'll go into effect. No one's going to vote against that. It's so dumb. They should have a, they should have a signal when you drive with your goddamn brights on. Yeah, but how do we stop this from happening? It is, you know, having just dealt with this in the Aston, it's annoying as hell. And nobody wants lights and other things on there. And we all drive, what, six miles an hour over the speed limit or somewhere under 10? Isn't that the general accepted rule? <laughs> If there are new drivers out there, just drive the speed limit. But come on, you're not going to get written up for uh, seven over. The only thing that's going to keep people from speeding, you know, and I hate to encourage this, some presence on the on the freeways of the CHP. You get yourself a nice fat speeding ticket. It's going to keep you in check. For that's a right. Year. It's that's going to keep true. you in check. But the 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 only thing that the idiot light in your car is going to do is promote somebody to develop a software alternative to turn it off. That's what's going to happen. It's not going to keep me from speeding. A ticket's going to keep me from speeding. Yeah. It's annoying. It's really annoying. I don't want them reaching into my car and doing that. I I try to turn everything off. The auto stop start. I just want everything off. 
you can always come to this hangar, borrow everything you, anything. <laughs> and none right. of the cars That's in true. here. None of the cars in here. But they're, they're, now they're coming for our classic cars. They're coming. <laughs> they're coming and for And then I'm gonna, you're going to sound like Charlton Heston. <laughs> they're going to pry this gun out of my dead, cold, dead hands. They're going to pry this Volkswagen Beetle out of cold, dead hands. <laughs> And if I can complain about my friends at Porsche just for one moment, uh, I was looking at Instagram, the Porsche feed, and uh, there was a Bad Boys Will Smith post. And I really thought that was in bad taste. Porsche, had, so they have a shot of Will Smith getting out of a 911, and it's Porsche. That's what the Porsche brand's about, the guy that slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars and hasn't really apologized yet. Porsche, that's who you want to align with? For the stupid bad boys movie. Half of us all, half of the journalists in L.A., and I'm not one of them, the car guys. But me and a bunch of journos were invited to this bad boys screening and hang out with Will Smith down at the Porsche Experience Center. I said, no thanks. No. You can talk to Will Smith. I, I go, okay, well, here's my question. Why the fuck did you slap Chris Rock on the Oscars? And why haven't you apologized yet? <laughs> That's what I would say. Is he going to let me ask that question? It was kind of gross. I agree. I and I'm a Will Smith it. fan, but I, he needs to make this right. He needs to make it right. But I find it weird that Porsche align themselves with They him. have so many opportunities to align themselves with so many cool things. Yeah. And, and they, they got ratioed. I mean, if you look at the post, it's not pretty. What you know? They, I guess they're too far away. They don't know what happened. They don't watch the Oscars in Germany. Or or, or the, maybe or, slapping's okay. Or maybe slapping's okay. I think it's a mistake. I think now Porsche owes us an apology. I hope Will Smith slaps you. <laughs> that, that would be my dream come true. I could die right on my deathbed. You I'm going to be completely honest with you. Look, I think people are entitled to make mistakes, and they're entitled to try to make it right. And I think that that should be everybody. That should be everybody. 100%. I just don't. I don't think this guy really has cleared the air. Not the right apologizing way is unacceptable. You you missed. He did. He did. He made one of those yeah, stupid publicist a, apologies, yes. and it, it, was it wasn't heartfelt. from the heart. There you go. You know who's doing a great job of that right now is Michael Richards. He's got a new biography coming out, and he's like, I'm not trying to come back. He goes, I'm, and I'm not, and I'm apologizing, and I'm not trying to come back, and I'm looking into myself into why that happened. I'm going to continue to do that. He's doing a great job with that. He's saying all the right things, and he, you know what? He's he's been welcomed back already, but every, you know, more people are going to welcome him back because I think everybody does feel like we all make fucking mistakes, some really bad mistakes, and there are people you can tell who are earnest about their apologies and want to make it right, and they should be allowed to do that. No matter who they are. That's, and that is true. And, you, and we as people, generally speaking, could tell when an apology is authentic and we when can, it's not. We can, right. Yeah. That's one of the most basic traits we have. We can tell. We can tell. We can see right through it, Zuckerman. And Will Smith didn't do that. And I may be biased, but I believe Michael Richards has done that. Um, anyways, we're going to do questions. But first, let's talk about our good friends... At Manscaped. Fellas, <laughs> blink if you haven't purchased a Father's Day gift yet. Yeah, we thought so. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Manscaped, the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. Maybe your pops has had a bush since the 70s, and that's okay. Our friends at Manscaped have crafted the total package for his special day, whether it's for the boys downstairs, his beard, or even the best pair of underwear out there. Manscaped has his bases covered. Head over to manscaped.com and get 20% off and free shipping with code SPIKE911. From daddy to zaddy, trust Manscaped. You can get a beard hedger. You can get Manscaped's handyman face shaver. You can get the performance package 5.0. The Lawnmower 5.0, the Shears 3.0. Every hair in your body is in danger with Manscaped. I love their stuff. I absolutely love it. I use it all the time. My uh, my my fleet, my guys, my family of men, Jack and James and Spike, we all have the Manscaped and Gopher. We all have Manscaped stuff. I don't wear the underwear. I won't go that far, but it's pretty cool if you can handle it. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code Spike911 at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at Manscaped.com and use code Spike911. Never forget where you came from, if you know what I mean. Happy Father's Day from Manscaped. All right, we've that got some wonderful. questions. 
That was a good ad read. That was very good. We love Manscaped. I want to see you. What's that? I want to see you and Gopher using Manscaped. Or you using Manscaped on If Gopher. the groomer doesn't get Gophers, you know what? His schmecky hairs? I have to get it before he paint starts painting the couch with it. <laughs> hmm. It's like a little it's like a little paintbrush. His little wick. You're gonna keep talking about my dog's penis. He has a penis or he has a spout. Tyler Bendis says, Help, I hate my job, but it funds my car addiction. What do I do? Keep your job. God yeah, damn it. Learn to like it. If you're good at it and it gives you money. Learn to like it. Put on a new pair of glasses. Johnny Lieberman uh, fan club number one, Cars, Monmouth, New Jersey. He went from hating Johnny the most to Johnny's biggest fan. Well, love somebody's pa- got to be. Love to hear Paul's observations on Scotty Scheffler arrest. We already talked about it. We think, in our limited knowledge of this uh, incident, that the police are to blame and not Mr. Scheffler. So uh, if it were up to us, we'd say drop the charges. That's what we would say. They're going to drop those charges. Trust me. Okay, we predict they're going to drop those charges. <laughs> Absolutely. What's interesting and what I didn't bring up is you have the, the personnel file on this Gillis, on this Officer Gillis. That's very uncommon. Most states, the powerful police unit unions have managed to get the legislatures to pass laws that you cannot get. Right. That employee <laughs> file, that misconduct file, or discipline file. Because it's useful to people like you who might be litigating. That's it. right. And useful to judge what the officer did to Mr. Scheffler. You see, you got a Yahoo on the force. How many he times seems, does the, the guy, guy seem like, I mean, from the stuff I read, it sounds like he likes to have a lot of fun, which <laughs> <laughs> made me kind of like him. It, kind of one of those fun sheriff type guys. A fun guy. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing that terrible on there. He just—he was doing donuts with a drunk guy or drunk lady that he picked. It's probably one of his friends. You know, all my friends growing up became cops in my hometown. I'm sure if they saw me and I was drunk, we'd go do donuts too. Uh, Germ, 911 time, wants to know, what shoes do you guys wear when you drive? Hmm. Whatever I've got on my feet. I, I wear these Nike Blazes a lot. I wear uh, a thin driving shoe or a comfortable shoe. But I want to be comfortable. The most comfortable I can be. I don't need any sort of driving shoe. I'm not pretending to race. In fact, on the racetrack, no, I guess I do wear the... I on guess the racetrack, it's Pelotis, but, but other than the track, it's whatever I've got on my feet. It really... Yeah, I've never right. found any interference. I don't barefoot it, and I won't sandal it. Those no. are the two I won't do. Now, if, if you have over a size 10 shoe, if you have a very large foot, that can become an issue with certain older cars. Yeah. There's not a lot of pedal space in the E-Type Jaguar. You could, you could run into, into trouble um, with, a big, with a big shoe where you would actually need a racing shoe if you had a large foot in that car. Well, narrow shoes, yeah. yeah Occasionally, narrow, I'll sure. put a narrow shoe on depending on where that throttle is, that gas pedal. Because sometimes they can be right up against the side of the uh, the wheel well in there. Not the wheel well, the foot well. Yeah, the tunnel. And then, and then yeah, you don't ever want to be pressing down and get jammed up. I don't like that feeling. Um, if Zuckerman was defending a magician in court, would he refer to him as a magician or an illusionist? And would the jury know why he couldn't get laid? That's an inside joke from last week. Have you ever defended a magician or sued a magician? You know, I are never, you a fan of magic in general? Do you I, like it? No, I do. I'm, I love to be entertained, and I, <laughs> I and I understand it's entertainment. Have you been to the Magic Castle? I have. You have. Yeah, pro- in the course of forty years, probably three or four. Have you times. seen Ricky Jay? Many, many years ago, he's dead now, but uh, of course, he was the best. A clever. I went he- to see Ricky Jay. A clever Hebrew. He knew all. Not only did he know how to do the magic he knew the history of it he was a scholar well i find magic really annoying i don't want i don't want to sit and listen to the person i get annoyed by it i really? don't go oh it, because because ultimately it's all fake so it's a bunch of fakery well that's right that but that's the fun is it, it, it that's the fun of, but i think don't you think there are people out there who are thinking maybe this guy 
Well, that's, that's exactly <laughs> that's exactly why you overheard this conversation where he was he's a fantastic illusionist. He's yes. not a mentalist. He's an illusionist. Who's the guy I saw on Broadway that Jerry told me to go see way back when? I don't uh, really God, not 20, 20, 20, 2019. That that was an incredible show. Really was great. Because he was doing he was doing more than sleight of hand. He was doing redirecting of your attention right. from the stage on Broadway, and you were missing things that were right in front of you. Namely, I believe, a guy in a gorilla suit walking right in front of you, and he was able to keep you from spotting it when you were trying to spot it. I might like magic, Sucker. I mean, he was an illusionist, too. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the suspension of disbelief. And we all want to, we, I, we're all willing participants in a magic show. We want to be tricked. We want to see, we, we want to spot what we can't spot readily. That's what makes the, P, the shell game in Three Card Monty so fun. I really wish I could remember this guy's name. David Blaine? No. It wasn't Blaine. It wasn't Doug Henning. <laughs> You right, realize a, a stand-up comedian is almost is is a form of magic. Oh sure, yeah. You're you're keeping the uh, the audience in an elevated place, right? And and you keep blowing on them like a feather to keep them up in the air. All right, never mind. <clears throat> Let's see. Well, that's nope. 356 Mafia wants to know, is uh, every Cybertruck sold so far located in SoCal? It feels like it. <laughs> I, would, I would think so. You know, uh, Pat Mingle, uh, is it illegal to defecate in a cemetery? They're talking about that, that, that story we talked about last week where uh, there's been a serial pooper on the gravestones. Yes. And then somebody sent me the Google. Did I send you the reviews for that cemetery? No, <laughs> there are lots of complaints. I mean, it's a really dilapidated, horrible cemetery, and there were many complaints about the the groundskeeper. Do you think? And I, <laughs> it's got to be him. He's doing it. Here's what I think. It's an inside job. It's an inside job. It's the groundskeeper, and they're not keeping up the gravestones. He's not doing his job. You or I are complaining about my your dad's or my mom's gravestone. He's reading the complaint on Google or Yelp and going, oh, Zuckerman, and walking up to the gravestone and I'll taking a dump on it. I'll complain about yeah. it. <laughs> I just here's solved your, it. Here's your perpetual care. Most. Uh, <laughs> right? Didn't yeah. I just explain most? I just, I, agree, I just solved it. I agree. It. Most and most businesses in the restaurant, the supermarket, the gas station, if they have a terrible bathroom, it's usually an inside job. Yeah. Somebody hates their boss, shits up the bathroom. I think it's that I think it's that simple. That's why it's on certain gravestones. I bet you anything and detectives if you're listening, look at the name on the gravestone and try and connect that to Yelp reviews. And, <laughs> and I bet and, you you're going to find it. And Spike's Car Radio. Yes. Will fund yes. the DNA it will? collection. Wait, yeah. Wait, what? Yes, we'll fund the DNA collection. Okay. Of the poop and of the groundskeeper. We'll do it. We'll do it. As a service to America. Yes, this is our contribution to law enforcement. Jerry M, 1993, who are the worst people at car shows? Everybody. Yeah, I would agree with that. He's, he's saying it's people blasting shitty music out of shitty cars. Now, I would never judge anybody's car. I think if you like cars, you might not be able to afford a nice car. You can come and we can look at your car. I don't even care what it is. Buer Griegel, good, 82, fine. As long as you love cars, you're fine with me. But that said... I don't like uh, guys in cargo shorts <laughs> and I, I weird just, white socks. I don't like uh, McLaren guys crashing into parked cars and showing off. I don't like that. Um, I don't like uh, uh, engine revers unless it's part of the show, unless we've got a new Porsche there revers. or a new Ferrari there and it's part of the thing. It's not going to get everybody in trouble. I don't... Uh, who else... I'm trying I, to think. I, just, like, I like driving. I don't like parking. Okay. That's so I don't like car shows, generally speaking. And yeah, collecting everybody, collecting everybody that likes the same thing in one place is never all that fun. 
Okay, uh, Lemon Shark has a legal question for Zuckerman. What about a class action lawsuit against streaming services who uh, people pay for ad-free viewing, but then they show ads on their own programming? Is that a case? Sounds like a case. Sounds if you. It sounds like somehow somebody's getting conned. Um, I don't I haven't thought enough about anything like this, but yes, if you're paying for, to be, if you're paying so you get something without ads, you shouldn't be getting ads. And I wonder if this. If, There's a lot of that, Zuckerman. I wonder if anti-spam laws uh, would apply. I don't know. This is a question for you. Remember what I said before the show. My my uh, my son and my wife were at the county fair, and right. if they're going to need Apple Pay, you should tell me now. And they said, "I said don't don't bother me because I'll be doing a show for an hour." And I guaranteed you they were going to bother you. Did it happen? It's, and right now, James is hitting me up. Just tell him to stay there, stay in Pomona at the county fair. Don't come home. I love my family. I'll do anything for them, even interrupt the show to give James money to throw up on cotton candy, which is about that's what's going to happen. Have you ever gone to a fair? LA, they're at LA County Fair. Ever gone to a fair where you didn't come home feeling nauseated for a week? No. <laughs> they said, no. you want to go to the LA County Fair? I go, are you crazy? No. Luckily, I had to work today. Why would anybody go to the fair? By the way, if you're thinking about a line of work, you don't know what to do yet, and you like, you're like me, you don't like to do things and get out of stuff, being a writer, you're always, you can work whenever you want. They say, can you go? I go, no, I got to write this morning. Yeah, I used to drive up and down Lapeer <laughs> to get between my office and yes. Beverly, between Olympic and Beverly, mm-hmm. and there'd always be these middle-aged guys yeah. smoking on the sidewalk, and mm-hmm. I'd always drive by and go, writer, yeah. writer. Who else is smoking outside at 11 a.m.? Anybody can be a writer. You just need a computer. You just start typing stuff up. That's it. And is a, is a thinker a version of a writer that doesn't actually have a computer to write it down? I'll tell you what's the hardest part about writing right now. The, the computer makes things very quick. Things are very fast. Our taste for things, uh, if you're, you're flying through a TikTok feed, is, is quick. And writing requires a moment of thought, and it's slow. You can miss and, the moment. And no, your brain, it hurts sometimes. Because you got, you're, you're like, God, this is slower than I remember it. That's, that's my complaint about writing. But it's a good gig. It's done pretty good for you. You're just thinking of ideas. You're, you're an idea salesman. You just sell ideas. You have a little piece of real estate. It's between <laughs> your ears. And you keep selling it over and over again. And, and look where it's gotten you from Imagine West what- Bridgewater, Massachusetts, <laughs> all the way to Brentwood, California. I want to go back to West Bridgewater. And do what? Um, well, one of my happiest memories was riding my bike to the driving range with uh, Paul Sheedy, my best friend. His nickname was Dickie Moe. And just sitting there on a Saturday night and listening to his transistor radio and renting uh, golf clubs and buckets of balls to people and then hitting the balls at Jay's sneakers. They had this big aluminum hanger to the left of it, and you just hit golf balls at that and hear it twang. That was a good night. That was a, that's a great I night. I could work there. <laughs> You're never going back to that. <laughs> and then uh, the, our friend Ray Ponty, he worked at the pizza place on the other side of the parking lot. And so when we were done there, we'd go over there. He'd give us a linguisa pizza. What a great night that was. And we'd hang out and listen to more music. Why can't I do that? You're never going back to that, unfortunately. I don't think either of those places exist. Nope. And neither does my, my hero, Myron Bloom. <laughs> <laughs> the butcher who showed the you nice are. Jewish butcher who showed the kid <laughs> Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer trussed up <laughs> in his meat locker. That's a, That was the greatest thing your brother told me. Oh, I didn't know that story. Uh, Spike, are you the guy behind Lego Seinfeld? I am not. I am not. Um, people always asking about Plan Z, how do things work? Do you figure it out. We don't give a shit. We don't know how it works. You just do it. That's what. Do it and you don't count the pennies. You don't count the pennies. Look, at, look at me. To, I haven't even driven the GT3 RS yet. I could care less. Care I don't less. care the if I ever you, drive it. If we, The minute you have to write something down between friends, it's oh, not it's fun over. anymore. Don't do it. Um, Zuckerman, is there a watch that you lust after? You've, do, you've had many purchases. I've stopped asking you what you're buying because every, every day it's a new watch. Military this, 
Submariners. Is there anything left? There's nothing left to buy. <laughs> There's nothing left. Well, there is one. A, Paul, a Newman dial Daytona. Yeah, that, that's a big commitment. They're little tiny. They're teeny tiny. But you could take some of your old other Daytonas and trade it up for that guy. That's right. But you got to be careful. You got it, but that's the, that's the scary thing because there's a lot of Fugazis. You could Lots. get a Fugazi. You could get a Fugazi, and then what do you got? You got Bupkis. You got nothing. That is true, and that would be a big problem. And that's always the risk. I mean, every time I think about maybe selling a vintage watch, I don't go through with it because I don't want to know. Geez, what if that's not real? What if that? What if that's fake? And that's happened before. Luckily, it happened. The last time it happened was with a. Uh, one of my first eBay Hoyer Diver orange dial. No, no, actually it wasn't. That was a guy here in L.A. I'm not going to say who. But a trusted guy of new old stock watches, and here's a brand new one, and I paid him $1,000 for it back in the day. Put together. Not real. The Franken watch. And it was, I called him after, uh, I don't know who I was selling it to, but I called him after I found out it was a put-together. And he just laughed. He goes, you mean, you mean 18 years ago? <laughs> he just As laughed. if it doesn't count. You mean I stole from you 18 years ago? <laughs> Didn't the statute of limitations expire on that crime? You know, I found out also that, that a, ooh, yeah, a watch in the family is not, is not a real deal. A watch that was, that uh, I shouldn't say this because, uh, no, I don't want to out who's got the fake watch. Yeah, don't say it. But is, was it vintage or new? It was a, it was new and it was supposed to be and it was it was supposed it was not it was a it was a pre owned watch from a trusted second hand wow yeah trusted yeah. same thing yeah yeah are same they going to make good on it we don't know we don't know and it's lovely it still has value but it, it's not quite what it's supposed oh, to be it's the worst it is not a bad quite feeling. what it's supposed it happens to everybody everybody. How did Governor Spike get caught at free pass on his phone by a cop? That was last week when I was uh, playing with my phone and I didn't have a license plate on my car. And let me be 100% honest with you, the car was not moving. The light was red. The law in California is you're not supposed to have your hands on your phone in your car, period. So that is what the law I was breaking. But I was not in motion. I have not heard of anyone in California getting a ticket for using a cell phone uh, in a very, very long time. Let me, let, me, let me tell you what I saw just now on the way here. Uh, uh, LAPD right next to a guy in a Honda, delivery guy, looking at his phone, the two of them moving up to the light at sunset and f at the 405 there. They, they were doing nothing. They looked over at the guy, didn't even care. He wasn't even looking forward. He was looking down at his phone, and I just went, same thing, just like, what, what's the deal there? We don't need more laws. We need existing laws enforced. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rocky Rebel wants to know, if you guys got stopped doing triple digit speeds, how would you get out of that ticket? I don't think you would. I, I think you'd have a lot of trouble getting out of that. You'd have to, you'd have, to have a very kind officer write you under a uh, hundred. Yeah. And you'd have to be in a set of circumstances where somehow the officer... You know, maybe if you were at 103, you might get lucky. But if you were driving 150, you would rightfully get in a lot of trouble. Yeah, you get arrested, right? Yeah. And then you'd have to lawyer up. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, you know, as we've seen, you get a lawyer, good lawyer, you go to court, good things can happen. Good things can happen. My better half just got a speeding ticket, Zuckerman. <laughs> I told you so. That's what you, that's what you get to say to her, right? I told you so. How does, how does someone like Eric get a speeding ticket? It's a sad speed ticket. It was a really low amount over a very low. It was like depressing speeding ticket. She went 28 and a 25? Yeah, it's like 20 that. and a 15? Yeah. And uh, I'm glad she got it because I called our fantastic uh, traffic lawyer guy and said, uh, here, will you handle this? And I said, what's going on with my ticket from way back when? He goes, what? He had forgotten to uh, submit anything for this ticket I had gotten over a year and a half Did ago. you tell him I could have got shot because of you? <laughs> I could have a warrant out for my arrest and get shot in the head? It was uh, a failure to change signal when changing lanes ticket. That's what I have. 
I got written up for that by the LA Parks police. <laughs> do you think that? Do you think that's actually a ticket? I think it is, but it, because it was never addressed, there was never a warrant. It, I guess it went to collections, and now we're having to yank it back. But I was, but I was like, geez, thank God Erica got this speeding ticket. Otherwise, I might have gone through life never addressing this issue. But yeah, talk about a lamer. Those are a couple of lame traffic tickets right there. Failure to signal. That's it's what I got. Chicken shit ticket. That, and he pulled a gun on me, that guy. Should have shoved it up his ass. <laughs> I was not uh, polite to him. He really pulled a gun on you? He had his hand on his gun, yeah. And he said, hands on the wheel! I was in a press car, and it had uh, plates from another state, and he thought I was going to kill him. This is L.A. Park. This is why L.A. Park should not be pulling people over. And I had... I missed him in my mirror, so I pulled into the left lane and apparently almost cut him off. Or I cut him off, and he says almost killed him and caused him to crash at 30 miles an hour, which is Did ridiculous. you tell him, go, go, to, go to the park and shoot a pop at? <laughs> go pick up popsicle sticks somewhere. I, was like, I, would, I thought it was a joke that L.A. Parks was pulling me over. I was like, what is that? And, I, and, he, and understandably, he was upset, and I understood. I was like, all right, I cut him off. I shouldn't have done that. And I didn't, but it was an innocent mistake. But he, he said, hands on the wheel, hand on his gun. And I said, calm the fuck down, buddy. He is a, calm he is the a fuck sworn down. peace officer. <laughs> I said, calm the fuck down. Calm the fuck down. Here's my license and registration. Don't tell me to calm down. He's just scre- he was screaming at me, Zuckerman. Yeah. Buffoon. Yeah. All right, let's get one more question, then we're going to get out of here. Let's do this one, because it's a good Porsche question. No, it's too many. Don't ask for my top five of anything. That's a ridiculous question. They wanted to know our favorite uh, paint-to-sample colors. Mm. I can tell you. All right, I can give you five. I can give you a few. We've had them lately. I'm a Meissen Blue, Oslo Blue, Horatium Green right now, Gulf Orange, I'm crazy about. And I'm very, uh, in the future, I think, we're Gemini Blue metallic family of blues. The blues are big time winners. And you know what? Continental Orange would be great. Oh. Yeah. Do they offer that? It, well, if it's a true paint to sample. Wow. That would be amazing. Right? Could you drive that in a, new, in a modern car? Yeah. You would, you'd be fine with it. I'm, I'm at the, uh, it doesn't matter age anymore. The fuck it years. Yeah. They, that usually comes around 80 at like Mick Jagger's age, but I'm, I'm getting there now. Do you think Mick Jagger runs better than you do? Like if we gave you guys a hundred yard dash. Oh, he'd kill me. <laughs> you know that they've got, they've got over 90 years old uh, track racers. Have you seen they those do? guys? That's going to be me. You got you to gotta see these guys 90 years old. I'm going to go get another MRI on my back because I actually want to be able to run again, and I need to get something fixed in my back. We can get you out in the tennis court, man. You'll lose weight like crazy. Look at me. It's not the weight. It's the fact that I've got the shoulder and the back injuries. <laughs> we got to get this fixed. I am. I'm actually going to get a lumbar MRI, and then I need to... Could you, but can you see me with my arm in a sling for six weeks? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Oh, six weeks. Yeah. Six weeks. Why not? Because you'll be great on the other side of it. The thought of being six weeks with a shoulder sling. What the fuck am I going to drive for six weeks? You're talking to a guy who's bandaged, bandaged up like a Civil War soldier. <laughs> I'm constantly, I have wraps and things on my body walking around. If I showed you my elbow right now, you would die. It's the color of those black jeans from falling twice on the tennis court. Once, recovering and falling, falling a second Falling age. Time. You're in the falling age, the falling years. No, I'm diving for balls, but I'm landing. That sounds on, horrible. I'm, don't, I'm, don't ever say <laughs> that again. I'm diving and for I'm balls. And I'm landing on the pointy part of my elbow. This is not recommended. Diving for balls. Diving into a swimming pool filled with men. I'm diving for balls. Anyway, that's our show, ladies and gentlemen. It was old school, just us, us chit-chatting together. Rufus, look at Rufus, sleeping under the couch, not eating plants for once. Finishing out our Memorial Day weekend. Was it a nice weekend for you? Fantastic. Over eight, over eight to my disgust, but um, I even had a smash burger last night. Oh. 
with from pickles where? from the Malibu Brewing Company, and it was fantastic. I had a double patty smash burger. Can you believe with, they made the burgers better they with made, a smash burger? Yeah, with the pickles and some ketchup. With the pickles? The pickles and some onions. And, oh. you know, I laughed. I was going to order coleslaw, and then I could hear you laughing. <laughs> and I said, I'm not, not going to make him happy. I'm not having coleslaw. I'm going to deprive myself of coleslaw because it is an old man order. When I'm going to make burgers tonight now just because of the way you describe that. And, but, but the obsession with the smash burger hit my house a while ago and i had one and it was fantastic they're unreal i can't believe someone made a burger tastier that way but that's how they used to do it at the old like old herbs and really? things like that in hollywood sure and then and what i've been doing my son and i have been have been binging on sopranos <sighs> and it really and we can agree that paulie's our favorite character we yeah. like his we like his wild bouts of violence your Polly, yes. Yeah, and he knocks a guy unconscious and screams at him, give me your wallet, you prick. The guy can't move. <laughs> he takes the wallet out of the guy's pocket after screaming. He just knocked the guy out of a tree. <laughs> he knocks him out of a tree. He's 30 feet up. And then, and then later, Tony says to Paulie, and, and you, 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 you knocked a guy out of a tree 30 feet up. He jumped out of the tree with a chainsaw at me, Tony. And I have a right to defend myself. <laughs> he knocked it. He knocked him out of a tree. Said he jumped. with a rock. No, it, there was a guy <laughs> holding him with a rope. Uh. Gardner, and they told him to fuck off. So he goes, okay, okay. He goes, gets the shovel. He knocks the guy out <laughs> holding the rope. The other guy in the tree. <laughs> then. The rope goes, whoosh, oh, right, right, and then he right. falls out onto the ground, <laughs> and he screams, give me your wallet, you prick. The guy can't move. Takes the wallet, throws it. Uh, I love that show. <laughs> it's the best. I watched every episode again during the pandemic, but yeah. now I think I might watch it again. Boy, they really... It's better with your son, right? It'll be great. It's so it's so well written. It's so incisive, and then there's always something so dumb, like when they go... And they go and they wreck the guy's restaurant. And remember, he's got Fiorello Laguardia's uh, paint, the one that hung in the in the in the office of in Laguardia's office. Mm -hmm. It's a guy in a gondola. They drive a they, they spray paint a big wiener with balls <laughs> over the gondola. So dumb and so entertaining. But it was good. It was great because they also have great insight into the human condition. I'll show you the Sopranos, Tony Soprano on Star Trek mashup somebody did that I saw. Really made me laugh. He takes the uh, helm, starts yelling, you got to be earners. It's really good stuff. It'll never end. All right. I think that's all. We've talked ourselves out, Suckerman. Okay. We'll see you guys next week on Spike's Car Radio. Thanks for listening to Spike's Car Radio. Listen to new episodes every Wednesday and be sure to subscribe. Now, I'm going to take a nap.